Well, Peter Beattie, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Barry. Thank when, you for having me. When you get a loss of this magnitude, can you go back more than one leader and more than one election? Oh, look, you know, Jeff Senior would say that. Uh, I've been retired this year five years. Of course, I would accept and should accept some responsibility. Uh, but let's look at what happened here. If you look at the tracking research, which is what I've done, and the Labor Party needs to do this honestly and openly if we're going to rebuild and move from here. After the 2009 election and the privatisation issue wasn't put to the people of Queensland, the Labor Party vote went down. Going into this election, the Labor Party was behind by 16%. 16%. It rose to only being behind 10% as the campaign went on. When Anna admitted there was no evidence against Campbell Newman, then the CMC cleared him. It went again. The gap went up to 70%. And that was the Sunday night before the election. In the last week, it dropped back to 15% and improved 2%. So if you have a look at where the vote came from, what were the reasons, they were the reasons. Now, what the Labor Party has to do, Barry, here is accept very honestly what happened. There's no room for recriminations. I think Anthony Chisholm, the party secretary, did an excellent job under very difficult circumstances. We have to move on because the problem is the Labor Party is not even an effective opposition with seven members. They have to look strategically about what they do about leadership, what we do about policy, because in 17 months we have a federal election. My view is that Anna does need to play a role in helping uh, Anna uh, and I think uh, uh, the member for Anala, uh, Palaszczuk, will become the, the leader of the opposition uh, and she'll need to be encouraged by Anna through all that. Then I think at some point, not now, Anna will need to make way for a future leader to be put into South Brisbane. And when you go back to that first point that you raised, the asset sales, was that so much about the sales themselves or was it about the process that the, the electorate felt misled? Look, it was about the process. It wasn't the issue per se, although there were a lot of people, including the ETU, who campaigned against the actual sale. But where Queensland has lost faith, and this was difficult for Anna to, be re to rebuild, and we have to be honest about this, was that the issue wasn't put to the people in the 2009 election. Now, what Anastasia Palaszczuk, who I think will be the leader of the opposition, has to do is to spell out Clearly what her policies in these areas will be, there does have to be some distancing from these policies, but it was about the method of the sale, the fact that it wasn't put to the people, that, loss, that lack of faith that was lost after 2009 continued. There was a blip when everyone admired, quite rightly, Anna's leadership during the floods. That improved for a while, but it dissipated very quickly. And going into this election campaign, the Labor Party was behind 16 percentage points. There was no way the Labor Party was going to win this campaign. Now, having said that, a couple of other things happened, Barry. That is, the LNP finally got its act together. Uh, I think Campbell Newman, uh, and I said this at the time, this was either the, the smartest thing the LNP ever did or the stupidest, and clearly it was the smartest. So they had not only a credible leader, they had a credible strategy. I have one of the people who was critical of Bruce McIver and others, but frankly, they got this right, and they need, we need to acknowledge from the Labor Party they got this right if we're going to rebuild. And when you talked about the, the asset sales, the, the, there's a parallel, isn't there, at the federal level? Uh, with Julia Gillard and the carbon tax because she went to the election saying there, there, there will be no carbon tax under a government I lead. There's a big lesson there? Oh, Barry, I don't know what the federal research is. I haven't seen it. What I do know is what the state research says. This election was determined on state issues. I don't believe there were any federal implications here whatsoever in terms of the result. But Barry, there will be federal implications in terms of the next federal election in the sense that Tony Abbott and uh, Campbell Newman are close. Uh, Tony Abbott came here and campaigned on a number of occasions. As of today, sitting around that COAG table, which I've done on many occasions, Julia Gillard has two friends, one from South Australia, one from Tasmania, and you'll find that Campbell will work with New South Wales, Victoria and Western Australia in strong opposition to the mining tax, the carbon tax and any other issues. So even though there are no federal implications in the vote in Queensland, What's happened is, as a result of yesterday and the magnitude of yesterday, which frankly I'm still trying to come to terms with, the loss of 44 seats is difficult to comprehend, but as a result of that, Julia Gillard's job just got a lot harder. And the party at a national level and at a state level has to face up to that and face up to it quickly because 
On the 28th of April, we have local government elections across the state. We've got Ray Smith and the Labor Party trying to maintain some numbers in the Brisbane City Council, which again is an LNP administration. So the Labor Party doesn't have long to lick, it wound, lick its wounds and it doesn't have any time for recriminations. But what, what, what can they do? You say they haven't got time, much time to get their act together. What do they have to do to win back Queensland at the federal level? Look, I think firstly the state party does need to look strategically about a future leader and I think that's a role that Anna Bly needs to play, again with Anastasia Palaszczuk. I think they need but to earmark South gap. Brisbane for a future leader. She would be a stopgap, I'm sorry. She would be a stopgap. Have you got anybody in mind who should be parachuted into South Brisbane? Look, I think uh, Cameron Dick is clearly uh, an incredibly good performer. So is Andrew Fraser. One of those has to be, in my view, put into South Brisbane. Otherwise, we've got to run a similar strategy to what Cameron Newman did, except the fact that it worked, and have the leader from outside the parliamentary party. But that needs to be done, because there has to be a credible opposition. No government or no parliament is any good unless you've got some form of credible opposition. So the party has to do that. But secondly, at a national level, the party does need to rebuild confidence here. The guts got kicked out of the Labor Party rank and file yesterday. They are, now they're going to be asked to, to stand up again on the 28th of April to try and get councillors elected. And of course that's important. The Brisbane City Council on one occasion in the past, on many occasions in the past, when the Labor Party was out of state and federal government, was the only Labor administration. Now they're not in administration at the council level but they need to have a good showing. And, and you know, sometimes people will say, hang on, Campbell Newman's going to have 78 seats in the state uh, Parliament. Let's have a bit of balance here and that may assist Ray Smith and the Labor Party in its campaign but it's too early to judge that. But federally, let me come back to your question Barry, federally the party at a national executive level has got to have a very careful look at what we do here. We have to rebuild or the Labor Party can lose the next federal election in Queensland alone. I mean, we don't have a majority of seats already, and the ones we've got are at risk unless we have a clear rebuilding strategy. We don't have any time for an ongoing argument about anything. We have to put our thinking cap on and rebuild. But, but that's what I'm not sure about. What, what, what is this rebuilding process? What needs to be done? What will appeal to Queenslanders? Well, firstly, I think Julia Gillard needs to spend a lot of time here. We need to ensure that we've got the best possible candidates endorsed across the state as quickly as we possibly can. We've got to make sure that our policies are sold across Queensland. I mean, what, what has to happen at a national level is we have to have a Queensland strategy that focuses specifically on driving ministers through here from one end of the state to the other. The problem now, Barry, is if you look at North Queensland, the Labor Party does not have one seat in North Queensland at a state level. The first seat we have is Mackay, and I guess some people in Mackay would say they're in North Queensland, but Mackay would be the only seat in North Queensland. We go Mackay, Rockhampton, and then you go zip all the way down to Brisbane, and I have to say, where's the next seat? South Brisbane? I mean, the reality is the Labor Party's in crisis, so we have to have federal ministers pouring through Queensland. We have to spend time selling our policies. Julia needs to buy a house here. We have to sell what the Labor Party's done, or we will face a similar wipeout here. He's saying Julia Gillard should spend more time in Queensland. Bill Ludwig, who's a powerful Labor Party figure in Queensland, he says that the blokes in Queensland just don't like women. Oh, look, I don't know. I mean, I, Bill's an old mate of mine, but the reality is this is... I don't know that it's a gender issue. The truth of the matter is that we've got to rebuild our vote. I mean, one of the things we have to accept is if you look at this vote, it means that the youth vote, the 18 to 25-year-olds who normally stick to the Labor Party, voted for Campbell Newman yesterday. And full credit to him, and I congratulate Campbell Newman. But he's pulled in all sections of the community, men, women, everybody. So, frankly, it's not an issue with, with blokes. It's an issue with all the Labor Party's vote. Now, I think Julia Gillard can do this. I think she can sell this story. But, frankly, the Labor Party at a federal level has to have a specific Queensland strategy where we focus on winning the vote here in every one of the key seats. Otherwise, as I said, Barry, at the risk of being tedious, we can lose the next federal election in Queensland alone. Forget about what happens anywhere else in Australia. Peter Beattie, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. For our monthly look at the poll of polls with Andrew Katsaris.